Hello, Abrinian. My name is Nalo, and today we're going to be looking at the less loved investments in CS. These are going to be items that are for people that don't really believe the hype and would rather fill more of a niche. But before that, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Skins Monkey. This video is sponsored by Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a website that you can take all of the skins that you don't want anymore and upgrade them into something pretty cool. Even if the item that you trade for is on a trade hold, it'll be added to your Skins Monkey backpack until it's ready to be withdrawn. When you use code Nalo, there's actually two bonuses that you get on the site. The first one is an up to $5 bonus when trading skins, and the second one is an added 5% bonus when you're topping up your balance. And this is on top of the 30% bonus they already give you. And even if you don't have any skins to trade, Skins Monkey actually has daily, weekly, and monthly giveaways that you can enter completely for free with a variety of ways to gain more entries. So check out this great site, Skins Monkey, by using my link in the description below for these extra bonuses. So quick note before we start, if you're looking for item investments that have hype as a factor, then you're going to want to look at this video that I made. Underrated investments usually implies the item doesn't have as much hype. And generally speaking, with the upcoming release of CS2, hype is actually one of the biggest factors for upward price movement in the short term. So generally, this video is going to be better for people that are maybe looking to diversify their investments and already have a lot of hyped items. So just keep that in mind and let's start with this list. So you're going to be seeing a little bit of a different style for this video and we're going to be talking about the MP9 Army Sheen to start off. So the MP9 Army Sheen is one that some people have talked about in closer investment circles but isn't really getting a whole lot of talk but it has a lot of solid factors for its investment potential. Starting off we have the obvious one, trade ups. The MP9 Army Sheen is from the Control Collection which means it trades up all the way to the Op Fade. The Blue Phosphor, and a little bit less so Op Fade, as many know now look very very good in CS2. Plus the M4 being as popular as it is, means the Blue Phosphor should be a really popular flex skin in CS2. But in order to get a Blue Phosphor these days you either have to buy it outright or do a trade up for it, and the baseline trade up materials include the MP9 Army Sheen. Now the reason this is important is because although there are a ton of MP9 Army Sheens out there, the fact that it's used in trade ups means that in the long term its quantity will decline, and more supply of it can't be created. What we have now is the end of it. Now the second factor is what sets the Army Sheen apart from the other greys in the control collection. The Army Sheen actually has the best float cap for getting double zero or triple zero floats. These are more desired for people that are doing trade ups because they get lower float results. As a result, it also makes it easier to get lower float Army Sheens while you're actually buying them. In fact, if you just simply mass buy them, there's a very good chance you'll get double zero floats very easily. And the third main factor for the Army Sheen is that it's very cheap. A factory new Army Sheen currently costs 39 cents, which means you can definitely do a quantity investment here and take advantage of the multiplication effect, meaning even if the Army Sheens only rise 3 cents, you can have a lot of them. So that 3 cents is actually multiplied over the amount of Army Sheens that you have. So that's the first fairly underrated item. I know you might be thinking, cases, but that's like one of the most popular things to invest in in general. That's true, but out of all of the cases that currently exist, I believe the Phoenix case is actually one of the more underrated ones. The more popular cases tend to be stuff like the Chroma 3. I've been hearing people buying breakout cases, for example. But you don't really hear too much about the Phoenix case. So here's the factors. The first factor is that the Phoenix case is relatively cheap compared to its contents. The Op Asimov and the AK Redline have both become very expensive skins after the Sands of Time have taken place. The Phoenix case seems a little undervalued when you take this into account. Secondly, the Phoenix case possesses the OG knives, which means the super expensive Kramit Blue Gem is a possible result from the Phoenix case. I believe with the unavoidable case unboxing hysteria that CS2 is sure to bring, a lot of big content creators should be looking to chase that Kramit Blue Gem, as we've seen previously with XQC opening revolver cases for example. And that's an important point here, the revolver case. The revolver case tends to be the cheapest way to attempt for that Kramit Blue Gem. And while the Phoenix case is more expensive, it possesses an interesting factor that gives it an edge over the revolver case. Due to it having that AK Redline and the Op Asimov, there are actually really good expensive skins that you can get out of the Phoenix case that aren't a knife. The revolver case can't exactly say the same. It's hard to say if the Phoenix case will catch a lot of that hype when CS2 rolls around, and that is a very unpredictable factor, but it has good reason to. And thirdly, one of the more important factors when it comes to cases specifically is supply. The Phoenix case has been out for a long time, it, its supply has diminished greatly over the years, and plus it's an operation case. So there's one of the rare times that I'll talk about a case as an investment prospect. Let's move on to the next one. Next up I actually wanted to talk about shadow daggers. Now for this space specifically I just want to draw your attention to some factors about them. I don't necessarily urge you to buy them. Not only are they very expensive which means a little bit more of a suboptimal investment because you can't quantity invest with these, but I'm also not personally super convinced on them. However I have heard a lot of talk about them so I wanted to relay some of the factors to you. Firstly and probably the biggest one, the glitch that existed with the shadow daggers crosshair is actually fixed now. Many people do believe that this 
was a huge problem in CSGO that was holding the Shadow Daggers back from being an expensive knife. And there is logic to that, the Shadow Daggers are an exclusive knife from the Shadow Case. But it's important to point out that the Bowie Knife is also an exclusive case knife. Yes, you can get Shadow Daggers and Bowie Knives from other cases, but in their original offering, the Wildfire and Shadow Case, the only knife you can get is a Shadow or Bowie. Also, the Butterfly Knife is exclusive from the Breakout Case. Now, the important difference here is the Bowie Knife, like the Shadow Daggers, is not a very well-liked knife. The Butterfly is a well-liked knife. It has fantastic animations, it just straight up looks cool. You can't exactly say the same for the Bowie and Shadow Daggers, and the Bowie never had a crosshair problem. So if you're thinking about buying Shadow Daggers as more of a play skin investment here, keep those factors in mind. I do think there will be an uptick for Shadow Daggers just because of the glitch being fixed, but you gotta remember that not everyone even knew that the glitch existed in the first place. Shadow Daggers are just generally an unpopular knife. Now again, this section is not to urge anybody to buy Shadow Daggers, I just wanted to talk about some of the things that I've heard about it, and offer some thoughts. Okay, now this next one is gonna be super weird, but honestly I think it's kind of fun. It's actually gonna be AK Jungle Sprays. But calm down, calm down, I know, I know, this is a super weird one. For starters, the AK Jungle Spray is actually Float Capped in Factory New. It's a very old skin, there are a lot of skins that have this .06 Factory New Float Cap. But the difference with the AK Jungle Spray is that, unlike something like the Scar Splash Jam, or the Glitter Winter Forest, we're talking about an AK, the highest usage rate rifle in CSGO. Now the crux of my argument here, it can only be described as fun. So prior to CSGO, we actually didn't have skins. CSGO was the first iteration of skins ever. And now that we're moving on to CS2, I believe there will be some level of growing nostalgia for the early days of skins. Now again, that's just my opinion, but it's something that I could see happening. And also to be honest, I kind of just really like the AK Jungle Spray. Now its price performance is pretty much just as you could expect for a skin this old, slow moving, upward incline. So it looks to be a little bit more on the safer side of things. It's also important to note here that the minimal wear jungle spray doesn't actually have a float cap. It's also important to note that for minimal wear jungle sprays, there's actually no float cap. The float cap is in Factory New and Battle Scarred. And yet the minimal wear AK Jungle Spray is actually $16. Now this definitely isn't the most vibrant, shiny, amazing, great looking skin that we have in the entire game, but I think it's sort of a niche relic of the era. So hey, if you're maybe a little bit more of an eccentric investor, keep your eye on it. And full disclosure, I do actually own an AK Jungle Spray, but it's just a silly play skin and field tested, so it's not even optimal for what I'm talking about here. And the final investment I want to talk about in this video, this one is also kind of based on nostalgia, but I think this one actually has a little bit more of a strong nostalgia argument, and these are items that signify big historical moments from CSGO. So for example, Olaf Pass Scouts, and on the much more expensive side, Olaf Pass Pink Didi Pats. Another example here is the MLG Columbus All-Star items, which I'm sure some of you newer people didn't even know existed. These kind of items are these cool sort of landmarks in CSGO's history, and there are more than the two I just stated, but I think as we move into CS2, a lot of these items that have these big attachments to pro players, a lot of these items that have big attachments to pro players or major tournaments could become even more rare and desirable than they currently are. Esports is a giant part of CS, and it's not going to die off as we move into CS2. Now although these items are extremely slow moving because of how rare they are, they have actually shown some really incredible price movement just over the time that CSGO has existed. The All-Star Nuke items, for example, now, have become ridiculously rare to even see compared to what they used to be. I actually made an entire video dedicated to them a long time ago because they're one of my favorite little pieces of the game, and back then you could actually obtain them for way, way cheaper than you can now. So yeah, another eccentric thing to consider, but I think the nostalgia argument here is a little bit more strong. And that's going to go ahead and close off the video, guys. I wanted to do something a little bit more different here. In this case, we're not exactly talking about min-maxing investments. This is some relatively more fun ones, and actually a very optimized, underrated item in the MP9R machine. So hopefully this comes out a well-rounded, balanced video. If you want to let me know your thoughts on it, be sure to drop a comment below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, it's absolutely free, costs you absolutely nothing, and supports the channel directly. Be sure to check out my Discord server and my Twitter with the links in the description below. I'll answer all your questions completely for free, as long as I have time. Be sure to subscribe to Nalo for the best investment content anywhere else on YouTube. YouTube, and check out Skins Monkey. Thanks guys, see you next time, peace.